Hello everybody. Today we're going to be talking about witnessing what it is to share our faith. First, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for just the many blessings you bestow on us. We thank you, Lord, for the greatest blessing, which is knowing you, Lord Jesus, as our Lord and Savior. We thank you, Father, for your great love. We thank you, Lord, just for the truth of your word that you give us that sustains us and gets us through so many things, that teaches us so many things. Lord, you allow us to see things that otherwise we could not see by your word, through your Holy Spirit. And we thank you, Lord. Lord, today, please lead us as we discuss sharing our faith, what it is to tell others about you, Lord Jesus, and how to witness. Because it's probably one of the hardest things that, that most people do. Um, we have a hard time sometimes. And Lord, we ask you to please guide us and lead us as we talk our way through this to try and make it understandable for everybody. It's in your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Lord, so, so this this can be a hard topic, right? Um, as we talk our way through this, because a lot of a lot of times people have a hard time sharing uh, what's what's on your heart, right? Um, it's difficult. A lot of people tend to be guarded about some topics, and for some. Sharing about Jesus can be can be tough. So we're going to talk about what we've, as we go through Scripture, what we've been commanded to do, and then we're going to talk a little bit about how to do it, and 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 really more 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 delving into what it is to share and and the various ways that God may present these. And I'm by no means an expert. I'm just going to share some personal stories and walk through what I've seen and, and some of the people that I've encountered since I've become a believer. Um, here we have in, in Matthew 28, 18, and we're going to start here because this is, this is the, what is termed as the uh, Great Commission. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the age, to the end of the age. Amen. So here we see where we've been commanded to to go out and make disciples, right? To tell others about the Lord. I have a few scripture passages that I wanted to to go through um, but I just wanted to share just to, to point you to scripture where we're told to do this right so I just read Matthew 28 18 through 20 um, there's another one that that stands out to me and that's in Ephesians 6 18 through 20 um, and the reason it stood out for me is Paul the Apostle he he, this this guy, he was fearless. He was out telling people about Jesus. He suffered persecution. He was beaten. He was shipwrecked. He was stoned. I mean, they tried to kill him multiple times. He always had people that were seeking his life. And yet through it all, he never lost. He never lost any... He never lost the desire to tell people. But even he asked right he said praying always with all prayer and supplication of the spirit being watchful to this end and with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints and for me this is paul speaking that utterance may be given to me that i may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel for which i am an ambassador in chains that in it i may speak boldly as i ought to speak <clears throat> so we see even Paul, from time to time, <clears throat> needed that reassurance, and you know he asked for prayer to make sure that he spoke boldly as he as he knew he should speak. And and I'm bringing these up. I'm bringing this this one up because as we talk here, we're gonna. I'll I'll get into some examples of. And I'll do that now. Um, so we see an example. For example, there's times where where we don't know, you know, you, you want to tell somebody about Jesus, but you're not sure if you 
if it's the right time, how the person will, will receive it, you start wondering about different things in your own mind, right? And a lot of times, the best thing to do is say a prayer in your head and say, Lord, is it the time for me to speak to this person? Would you have me to, what would you have me to say to them, right? And leave it in, in the Lord's hands. I can, I can tell you from my own experience, there's been times where I've been speaking to somebody and I remember thinking, Lord, do you, do, is there anything you'd like me to say to this person? And I'm not even done finishing that prayer where I was just asking the Lord what he would have me to do or if he wanted me to speak to this person about him, that he make a way. And next thing I know, the conversation naturally just turned to to spiritual matters and to be able being able to share with them about the Lord, right? Um, we want to be able to do that, and we want to we want to do it in a loving way. Um, one of the things that we need to be careful of is not to do it from the standpoint of knowing more than the other person or using it as a as as a format for arguing with somebody else. Um, God doesn't want us winning arguments, right? He wants us to lead people to Christ and to do it in a loving way, which kind of segues into the next scripture that I that I had for us. And that's that's found in First Peter three fifteen. Right? We're told this is Apostle Peter writing this. And he says, But sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks who asks you a reason for the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So he's saying always be ready to, to defend what it is that we believe, right? That doesn't mean that we do it in a mean and aggressive way. That means that when we have the opportunity to, we will tell people about the Lord and tell them what it is what, that we believe and why. Right? One of the things that helps us, but this shouldn't stop you from telling somebody about Jesus, but one of the things that helps us is we're told to be diligent, to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Right? We're told to, to read God's word and learn what it is that God would have us to say to people. Right? Um, and based on the truth of his word. So as we talk through this, one of the hardest things I think I've experienced personally as I've seen is for some of us, it's it's difficult, right? Not everybody's good at, at at expressing thoughts or ideas or all of that. And we can sometimes think, I don't know enough. And that can stop us from from sharing about Jesus. The, the one thing that you can speak to that no one can, can refute is what the Lord has done in your lives, right? What you know of Him, what you've experienced from Him, right? Because... As believers, we have a relationship with the Lord, and many times He will speak to us, or things will happen that we know only God could have caused. And we can always share those, right? One of the things that I share personally is what the Lord's done in my life, how He's changed me, how I was one way, and now I'm another way. And it's not I that did that, but the Lord, right? The Lord changed me. So today, as we as we talk about how to share our faith and the importance of it, it's very important, right? Because we want other people to come to know the Lord. We don't want people to perish, right? God doesn't desire that either. We're told, right? That God, God desires that none should perish, but that all should come to repentance, right? It's His, it's His goodness that leads us all to repentance. So we should do that in love. And as we talk through these things, there's, you know, scripture passages that we talked about. Um, but one that, that I think of is, is in, in Romans 10. In Romans 10, it tells us, right? It says, and this is, this is Romans 10, and I'm going to read from verses 15 through, through 17, right? So it's, and it starts in 15, it says, How shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes from hearing, and hearing by the word of God. 
Now, in the context of this, Paul's speaking about Israel, right? And the fact that they haven't, you know, if they haven't heard the gospel, how are they going to come to know? This applies to, to anybody who's never heard the gospel, right? We're told to, to, to go out and make disciples of all people, right? We're, we're told that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, right? So a lot of times as we speak to people, the Holy Spirit will guide us into what we should say to them. What I would say is if, if, if this is something that you feel the Holy Spirit's laid on your heart, then speak to the person, trust in God to guide you through. You'll be surprised what will happen, but if, that, if you have that desire or you feel that the Holy Spirit has laid that on your heart, speak to them. And the Holy Spirit will guide you in what to say, right? Like I said, a lot of times you can talk to them about what God has done in your lives, and that tends to to be something people can't really argue with. They may they they will have to look and hear and say, "What is it that you that you've said to me?" Right? Because this is what you've experienced of the Lord, and as as that gets communicated to them. It'll make them start to wonder, okay, why are you that way? What have you seen, right? And again, we're commanded to do this. And, right, there's there's various people. I mean, one the, some of the gifts that the Holy Spirit gives some people is the gift of evangelism. There are some out there that have absolutely no problem sharing. And it's what they enjoy doing. It's their gift. So they're very good at it. Others... You know, it's as the Lord presents opportunity.